Hello, this is Dr. Janish. This video is going to be an open reduction and internal fixation of a distal proximal phalanx fracture that is intraarticular. This uh, child presented to the office uh, quite late after his injury. He was approaching four weeks on presentation, and this is an extremely difficult fracture to fix. The uh, child continued to play in uh, sports and heavy activity and uh, has created some erosion at the fracture site. We've placed a Esmark tourniquet to exsanguinate the arm, and a upper arm tourniquet is acting uh, to uh, prevent blood flow back into the arm during the surgery. At this point, we've marked the uh, skin incision with a skin marker as usual, uh, and the uh, skin is incised with a 15-blade scalpel. Littler scissors are used to dissect down to the uh, joint surface uh, where we'll be trying to expose the uh, fracture segment. I've immobilized the extensor tendon mechanism and uh, I've worked my way down to the joint capsule. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, bone callus, which is uh, where the bone is trying to heal itself, uh, but it's healing itself in an uh, incorrect position. This has to be uh, chipped and gently uh, scraped away with Ranger forceps, and here you can see uh, that I'm using a, a very, very small curette. Uh, the fracture is uh, in my uh, forceps that you see on the left, and I'm using a beaver blade to scrape away some of the fibrous tissue that's developed in the fracture site. I often describe this to patients as uh, glue that was placed on a piece of china that was broken and the uh, piece of china got moved and the glue was allowed to dry, uh, therefore not allowing the uh, fractured segments to key into place. The x-ray you just saw was me testing the uh, location of that uh, fracture segment uh, and now I'll be placing a, a pin through the fracture segment and into the bone across from it to hold it in place. Once that's placed I'll confirm its positioning with the uh, fluoroscopy. You can see there that that's holding up quite nicely. There is some erosion in the uh, middle of the joint surface that uh, is a secondary to the delayed presentation of this patient. A second K-wire is then placed in a crisscross fashion. This gives some stability to the uh, K-wires, and you can see the uh, positioning there on the fluoroscopy. Uh, those are quite acceptable, and we're going to uh, bend those over uh, so that they don't uh, poke the patient uh, and lay nicely flat against the skin. Uh, this is done with a needle driver and a suction tip. The K-wires are then trimmed off with a wire cutter. and these will remain uh, for one month. The wound is irrigated with saline. Uh, the joint capsule is repaired with uh, absorbable suture, and the uh, wound is then closed in layers. This is the uh, final uh, portion of the closure, which is just the skin. This is being closed with uh, 5 nylon suture in a horizontal mattress fashion. Typically with pinning procedures, uh, an incision is unnecessary. However, in this uh, patient's uh, circumstance, there was a significant delay in presentation. Uh, from when the patient hurt themselves to when they uh, presented to our office. Therefore, this required uh, opening of the uh, fracture site and removing the uh, bone callus. Well, the sutures are in, and now we'll place some local anesthetic so that when the uh, patient's arm wakes up, the uh, finger is numb and pain-free. Then the 
you sterile dressing and splint is placed over this hand using bulky uh, super fluff sponges and Curlex, followed by a custom splint, which has uh, been dipped in water and is a fiberglass wrapped in soft cotton padding. We then wrap the splint with a soft coban dressing, although this appears to look like a cast. It is essentially a splint with a, a soft, uh, squishy coban dressing around the outside. And in this particular case, we've uh, chosen to use the uh, child's school colors and given him a dual color dressing for fun. That's the end of this surgery. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.